It's a big fish. Where I live in the Brainerd Lakes area of Minnesota, we're surrounded by 464 bodies of water with only 30 miles of my home. There's more opportunity for fantastic fishing than you can shake a stick at, which is one of the big draws here for tourism and why I've made it my home. And since the closest landing is only three miles from my home, I've most definitely concentrated on fishing gull more than all the rest in the area. As a walleye angler, there's always a good bite going on somewhere on the lake. Early season is a phenomenal time for pulling crankbaits over shallow flats during the late evening or at night. It's one of my favorite seasonal patterns because of both good numbers and size. Fall on Gull Lake is also a tremendous time for walleye fishing on deep water structures while using jigs or live bait rigs. The later it gets following the lake's fall turnover, the better it seems to get. And when it comes to family fishing, it's tough to beat the fast action of sunfish and crappies. I don't know how many times we've all gotten together on Gull to catch a nice bunch to bring home and have a fish fry. So all in all, also factoring what can be incredible bass and pike fishing, Gull Lake is and has always been a very special body of water to me and many others. The Brainerd Lakes area is a thriving tourist destination and to accommodate all comers are a host of old time traditional lodges scattered around those lakes. And last summer we had the thought, why not skip the wasted time of driving a distance for a little family getaway when we can drive a grand total of five miles and check into one of our own area's finest. Cragen's Resort on the south side of Gull Lake. Dutch Cragen speaks of the resort's rich history. Dad sent my grandfather up, who just retired, to, to supervise construction of eight cabins. We started the business in 1941. Look at the flowers. This is a cabin? Hey, a pool table. Wow. This is like a house. The Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor the day after my dad had gone in to sign the mortgage in Brainerd. Nobody knew the place. My dad formed the Minnesota Resort Association. In 1942, we ran an ad about two inches saying all Minnesota resorts are still open. Why don't you grab your purses and uh, they got that big restaurant right up here by the lobby. The, the war uh, got us through with uh, eight cabins. My dad built four more. I was stationed over in uh, Berlin and he called me and said, I'm gonna sell a resort or you're gonna come back and run it. I uh, debated about that for a while and then I came back. So. I ran the resort and we are now the largest year-round resort in Minnesota. But not because of me. <laughs> Craggins is a four-season resort, which offers so much more than fishing, literally something for everyone. Yeah, this is Craggins' premier restaurant, Irma's Kitchen. And it's really, really good. Yeah, I think you'll love it. Here, let me get the door. Evening, Ben. How's it going tonight? Oh, good, starving. <laughs> Wonderful, we came to the right place. I know that. <laughs> Just for you, follow me right this way. Thank you, sir. You bet. Oh, one with a beautiful view, too. Mother, would you like to try it? I think I'll do that New York medium rare. Well, to a good dinner, good evening. Mm. You know what's so nice about this place, though, dude? I mean, we're not on vacation, but boy, do I feel like I'm on vacation. Make sure when you come to Craigan's that you come to Irma's and have dinner one evening at least. The food is absolutely out of sight. It's just great. Now, when we return, of course, we'll be going fishing like good Winkleman's always do, but that's not all. I mean, we're playing tourists on vacation, so the only real plans we have are doing whatever we want whenever we feel like it.
Continuing now at Craigens Resort in central Minnesota, up next is probably something many of you don't expect to see on a fishing show. Yes, on this day before fishing comes golf. Without question, one of the fastest growing attractions to our area that everyone in my family loves. Very early on, Dutch Cragen saw the writing on the wall that keeping up with the times meant developing every possible activity for visitors to enjoy. And here are the results. We built um, 18 holes. And the question of who would we design it with? Robert Trent Jones was flying in from Siberia. He had 220 courses already. After two or three days, he said, this is the course, and it's sand. So after rain, it'll be dry right away. He got the job. I said, Robert, uh, what were you thinking the name of the course should be? And he said, the iceberg. I said, Bob, that won't work. You know? <laughs> so how about legacy? That's how it started. We finally got the other 18 in. We call one of the 18 Bobbies, and the other is called Dutch. And everybody thinks that's named after me. Oh, no. Robert Trent Jones knew that Irma and I were going to a hotel meeting in Holland. And he said, you know, you better get a couple books about early golf, because Holland is where golf started. He said, you'll read that in 1380, these guys hit their balls down the road and the last guy to hit the tavern door had to buy a keg. Nice drive, baby. Ooh, I launched that button. So there's some early paintings of the Dutch showing Scots how to putt, how to golf, and it's still great because it's social. It's on the green and two for par five, right there. As we started looking for names with, with Robert and Trent Jones, how about we just call one Bobby's? If you play Bobby's from the tips, it has the highest rating and slope of any golf course in the state of Minnesota. Higher than even Hazeltine, that how many PGA events have they had there? It's a, it's a, a tremendous courses. That's known as Bobby's, but you know, Bob, Robert Trent Jones. That's, that's 18 holes. And the other one, uh, well, he said, why don't you call that something to do with Dutch? Because that's where golf started. The third course that we have was a nice little invention from the Robert Trent Jones people because Bob loved St. Andrews. And St. Andrews had a space shortage. Many of their holes used the same green for two different fairways. One hole, one missed birdie opportunity. We have two 18 hole uh, short courses, they're called, 12 greens and 18 tees. Every day we reverse it. I love them, I play them all the time. Now when we come back, Chris and I will be taking to the waters of Gull Lake to get back to the basics of our greatest love. Whenever the walleyes are biting, you know we'll be there having a great time trying our best to cash in.
Okay, now back to Craigan's Resort on Gull Lake for a second, yes, second mini vacation last fall. After having so much fun the first time, Chris and I decided on some wee time to take a shot at some fall walleyes. Now, I don't care how well a person knows a lake, the first part of the equation is finding fish, and then fish that will actually bite. See, there's a fish, and we got fish out here, so let's just, we're gonna scoot on up to that and see what we got. When we seen a couple of fish, I didn't start fishing right away. I started hunting right away and looking around the area. So why do you like fishing in fall? The water's 49 degrees, and it's time to start eating the fat. They first off go deep because the lake starts stratifying by temperature different. And then secondly, they're looking for big food as a rule. That's a fish swimming right behind the boat. So is that. Those are fish swimming right now, right back there. I'm gonna come around the tip of this point and back to that spot. If we ain't had a bite by then, we're moving. Look at how clearly defined that school of fish is. We just went right through them. I think it's time to go to the bar and play pool. <laughs> so they're pretty. Are you going to need a net? Yeah. Well. Probably. You have to tell me. There you go. Well, that was on a jig, Chrissy. Yeah. Well, that is a nice walleye. He's right here. I got him. Can you believe I caught a fish like that? Yeah. Huh. Now you can't say I didn't catch a fish. Ooh. It's a good idea if one of us has got a jig on and one a rig, you know. Take oh, your time. Oh, jeez. Take your time. Get the net. I'll get the net. Just get the net and talk to me later. Get the net and talk to you later? Okay, maybe he's not as big as the other one. He's Thank about you. the same as the other one, but it's, it's a real nice walleye. Thank you. And that's two for your rig. Yep. And I didn't get a bite on my jig in the meantime. Well. What about another one down for Mama Bear? Good job. Hey, thanks. I'm gonna spin around and try and go right back through there. That was two fish in just a few minutes. If you catch one more before I get a bite, the jig is coming off. <laughs> I have a sneaking feeling somebody in the back of the boat's gonna say, I, I got another one pretty soon. Cause she's liking the fact that she's ahead of I me. I am. To me, this is paradise. It's pretty good. Okay, I'm getting too warm. I gotta take my jacket off now. Oof, much better. Well, you having fun? Yep. Uh -oh. oh, and another fish. Yes, we have good more man. to clean. Good man. Yeah. Oh, just a nice fish. Do you like a chicken minnow, huh, buddy? Well, we got a feast. Ah, there he is. Oh, fuck it. Was that ever cool? Nice fish. Yeah. Okay, I'm starting to like this kind of fishing, Winkleman. <laughs> got a lot of fish already. You know, to me, this is one of the best features of this polar craft. I'm gonna bait bucket right here so I don't have to ask you for a minnow all the time. This is all I'm fishing with. Taking the minnow. It's a creek chub. Just hooking them on a precision jig, like so, and letting them do his flopping thing. But I just love this feature. Oh, there he is. I got him. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. <laughs> I'm back here. All right, I got it. Well, they're all good eating size. Oh! Oh, you got one on too? Oh, I had my jig. I just dropped my <laughs> rod when you caught that fish. <laughs> yep. Got it. There's yours. Thank you, ma'am. 
Ah. Ouch. Don't you snap. You got too many teeth to be snapping at me. That was pretty good. That was actually pretty darn awesome. Look at him. Not shabby. Okay, mine's a little smaller, but mine will be just appetizer. Yep. I like the way they do it with their fins. Oh, you for know? sure. For sure. And with my big paws, he probably doesn't look like much. But I, what I see are two fillets about this wide, about that long each. I'm telling you, I'm ready for a brewski. Oh yeah? I am. Great day in Gaul. Good fishing. Good fishing. Oh, that's right. I'm with Babe Winkleman. <laughs> Good fishing is brought to you by Chevy Silverado, strong for all the roads ahead. Polaris, hardest working, smoothest riding. Go fish in Ontario.com. Go fish Ontario, it's catching. Johnsonville Sausage, sausage is all we do. Welcome to my kitchen where today we'll be can cooking up delicious venison pot roast. Hi everybody, we've got some company coming over later today and I'm cooking up a nice venison roast with a method of cooking that I think is just gonna blow your mind. The Great Taste from Chris's Kitchen brought to you by The Great Taste of Johnsonville Sausage. To begin, I've got my Seth McGinn's can cooker, which is the key of making my roast with vegetables perfect by utilizing the steam confection to infuse all of the great flavors together. And just begin, you spray inside of your can cooker with some nonstick cooking spray. So now we're gonna add all of the liquid to it, which is gonna be three cups of water, three cups of beef broth, and then three cups of red wine. And make sure it's a goodie too, so that you can have what's left over. And now it's time to add our oregano, some thyme, and some rosemary. Salt and pepper to taste, and then you're ready for all the rest of the goodies. I'm gonna stir up all of my juices with the seasonings. Get that mixed well. And then I'm gonna add my rack in the bottom of my can cooker. All I need now are my vegetables, which is potatoes, onions, carrots, and then my roast. Easy, and you're ready to feed six people. Okay, now you just simply put the cover on, and you latch it down. Turn on the burner on medium to medium low. Meanwhile, Carly's helping by putting together a nice meat and cheese tray using an American Angler Pro electric knife. Looks like it's going good over there, Mom. Once you start seeing the steam coming out of the top, then you start timing it, about 90 minutes for about a three to four pound roast. And then you just take it off and you're ready to serve your company exactly the way I'm going to be. Okay, Carly, my roast is all ready for you. If you would, please cut this up for me. Yeah, for sure. Okay, there that is. And I'm gonna pull out all these vegetables. And there's that. Venison roast, done in fraction of the amount of time than other cooking methods. And an appetizer platter that's cut up amazingly fast. I'm Chris Winkleman, and thanks so much for helping out in the kitchen today, Carly. It was a lot of fun. You know, today's show was definitely not only about fishing, which obviously is most often the case. In fact, intentionally, I offered very little on angling education because it was much more about a where-to opportunity that offers great fishing and a whole lot more for a family to enjoy. It was about the Brainerd Lakes area where the local boom is most definitely tourism, a classic Minnesota lodge that's chock full of history that's kept up with the times in every way imaginable. There's so many reasons we Winkelmans love to step outside to enjoy the great outdoors, and yes, golfing is certainly one of them. But as you've also seen, fishing is our greatest passion, which is what's so great about a place like Craigens. 
fishing, golfing, or whatever else, there's always something fun going on, and you'll find the finest in accommodations, food, friendly service, and the whole Brainerd Lakes area to explore as well. I don't know why it is that so many always rush to the furthest shore to fish when some of the best spots are most often very close to the landing. Well, so to speak, in the case of running out on today's adventures at Craigens, we did exactly the opposite by taking advantage of a local opportunity that people come from all over the world to experience. <laughs> Pretty smart, huh? I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing. Hey, down here, we've got some really cool stuff going on. Like weekly giveaways for some of the same great gear we use on the show. Stuff worth hundreds of bucks. Subscribe to our e-newsletter that's full of super tips and offers. Share your picks and get your daily fix on the outdoors. Oh, gotta go, but swing by and like us on Facebook, okay? You'll be glad you did.